Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. Now recently I came across a Photoshop tutorial by the F64 Academy run by Blake Rudis and it is 5 practical tips for Photoshop's cloning stamp or clone stamp tool I should say. Now it's a very good tutorial and as Affinity Photo pretty much works the same way as Photoshop when it comes to the clone stamp tool as it's called the clone brush tool in Affinity Photo and I'm sure I will mix those two up at some point um, it is worth in my opinion adapting this so Affinity Photo users can see how these tips work I would also recommend that you watch this video because he is a far better editor than I am and you may pick up something I've missed. Now just to recap I have made a similar sort of one in the past which looked a bit more in depth in how the clone brush tool worked. This was back in 2017 I will add a link to this and the F64 Academy tutorial in the description for this new video. And let me go back to this one. What he does here is he gets a street scene and he, in the end, he ends up cloning out all the cars, all the people. So there is just a street. Now I'm not going to be that adventurous. Um, but I have got a similar image of this street scene here. Now, in Affinity Photo, there is now what we call, it's called the in-painting brush tool. Which I think by and large has sort of taken over from the clone brush tool. In that rather than you doing a lot of the work you let the program do the work but in painting brush tool is not good for everything so let's say for example this mark here on the road let me just duplicate this layer so I'm not using the original so if I come to the in painting brush tool and I paint over that mark there just wait a little bit and you'd be hard pressed to sort of tell that that had been taken out um, if I try one of these cars for example this one here wait for that to do its thing I mean, it's not a bad attempt. I mean, you, you, yeah, the, obviously the markings in the road are there, but you're not getting this black line continuation that goes across here. So this is where the in-painting brush tool sort of doesn't quite do the job that you would really want it to do. So let me delete that one. And again, for safety's reason, I will just duplicate that and keep my original safe in case something goes wrong. So we'll start with the first of Blake's tips. The first one being is keeping the settings very simple. So the clone brush tool is here or you can just press S on the keyboard for the shortcut and the settings are all up here. So what Blake suggests and I'm not saying this is 100% true with every picture but these are his tips and is that you keep the opacity at 100% hardness at 0 and the blend mode which is here set to normal so that when you do the clone stamping the simpler the settings the sort of easier it would be I have found in the past that sometimes like, reducing the opacity can sometimes help and then you gradually build up the cloning but that is neither here nor there I'm trying to stick to Blake's tips so this is what we're going to go with and so we will keep that as it is now his second tip is to clone onto a new layer don't clone onto the original so what you need to do is add a new pixel layer which is this icon down here so you'll be cloning onto a blank layer and not altering the original 
But if you do this, you do need to alter the settings where it says source up here from current layer to current layer and below. So it will sample from the layer below but put the cloning on the layer above. So again, this will take out this mark on the road here. Now with the clone stamp tool, you need to find somewhere to clone from. So I'll just press the Alt key to give me the target area. And I think that's option on a Mac. So let's say I pick, click there. So that's where it's going to sample from. And as you can see in the circle in the middle there, you can see, hopefully see the part of the road that is going to clone on top of that. So as you can see, that's done pretty much what the in painting tool did. And I can turn that layer on and off and you can see how well that has done. But that was a fairly simple bit to clone out. So we're now going to try it on this car like I did when I used the in painting tool. And this is where we sort of come to, in fact I'll try it on this white car. Um, because the next tip is to be contents aware of where you are cloning from and where you're cloning to. So in that sense, obviously see, we've got this black line going along the road. So we want to, there's no point me say, let me come off this tour a second, get this distracting. There's no point me cloning from this area to this area because you're just going to end up with an area here that doesn't have this black line that continues along. So you have to be able to pick the right sort of area to clone from and you know to so it will fit into the area you're cloning to. So if I come back to the clone stamp tool, so obviously I need to clone from this sort of black line area here. So I'll press the Alt key just to select an area. Just try there. And move up slightly. And do it in little stages, don't try and do it all in one big hit. So as you can see that now that white car is gone and it does look more natural because I've got the right sort of contents from the right sort of area. So again, if I turn that layer on and off, you can tell you know, the, the difference that has been made. Now, one thing to do is tip number four is to avoid repeating patterns, which is what I have got here. And again, let me come off this tool. In that, I've got this line coming down here three times, so it's repeating. Um, this is because of where I've cloned from, it's sort of repeated. Now this is something you know, that may have naturally appeared in the picture. Um, if I take this off, yes, it was only the once here where the car wasn't sitting over. So that has been repeated twice. I mean, you may not find that distracting, but at some point if you do it too often, the eye is going to pick up these areas. So this is where you you do need to sort of maybe pick slightly different areas to clone from. So if I come back from the the clone stamp brush tool, I should say. I'll just reduce the brush size a little bit. Again, hold the alt key. And this time I'm going to sample from this side. Let's, let's sample from there, I think. And then I'll just take out at least one of those repeating patterns. See, it's now less obvious that that is a repeat. And I will leave it like that. So then we come to like the last tip in Blake's video. And that is to use more than one layer. I mean, it does help if you rename this. So let's say, let's say if I call this clone one. So I know that. Um, what was in that layer 
um, what I cloned out. So if I'd named it white car, it might have been a bit more obvious. Now, let's say, so if you use more than one layer um, for your cloning, if you need to add anything, you know, like changing blend modes or adding any effects to a certain part that you have cloned, you are only affecting that area and not everything that's on the same layer. So this is sort of best demonstrated, I think, when you use the clone stamp tool to add something rather than sort of take it away. So let me add another layer, and this time I'm gonna call it boxes. And it's these boxes here that I'm talking about. I don't know quite what they are, they're probably, probably newspaper stands or something like that. But I'm going to repeat this area here and I'm going to put it up here somewhere and so to do that I just need to hold down the alt key and sample this area and so I'm going to put this it didn't work why didn't that work and I'm just painting over that area down there so I'm using that area to clone another version of those boxes up into a different part of the picture now obviously I've caught a bit of that bush there but I can simply get rid of that by just cloning that bit out now the only thing here is it's probably not so bad in this particular picture but if you're the perspective could be wrong or it is probably slightly wrong in the sense that because these are further away from the camera they should be slightly smaller and if they were all on, all these items were on the same layer if you try to reduce this one you'd be reducing all of them and it would be, you know it'd be obviously not a good thing which is why it's best to have the different clones on different layers so just I'm just going to reduce this slightly. So I've come to the move tool. Hold down the control key and just reduce it a little bit. Not not by a vast amount. Just so that it is slightly smaller from those ones there. And like I said before you if you want to add any adjustments, because this now may not exactly fit tonally or what have you and you may want to just add um, an adjustment to this new layer so let's say for example I added a levels layer now at the moment this would affect all areas I'm going to click and drag this down so it is a child of the boxes layer so I'm now only going to affect that boxes layer so I can make the area darker or lighter. I mean, I don't really need to do it with this particular area, I don't think. But if you just needed to make something subtly lighter or darker to fit in to where you've cloned it to, you can add adjustments if you have these on separate layers. So if you want to resize or add adjustments, it's always best to have that particular area you've cloned onto a new layer. So basically that are the are the five tips. So number one, keep your brush settings simple. Number two, always clone onto a new layer and have that set to current layer and below. And number three, be aware of the contents of where you are cloning from to where it is going to. And number four, avoid repeating patterns because the eye will pick them up and people will know. And number five, use more than one layer for your cloning areas. Now I have also made a written version of this which can be downloaded and 
I will add a link to that also in the de description for this video. And that is basically it, so thank you for watching and goodbye.